Hi, I'm Mai and I'm back on this channel after a very long hiatus, but hopefully I'm here to stay. I've seen a lot of your comments, not comments, sorry. I've gotten a few DMs over the past few months and my last DM I got was why did you start stop posting on YouTube? And I was like, you know, I've been meaning to go back on it, but that just pushed me to do it again. So I'm here now. And I was like, you know, I just graduated college fall last fall, December 2021, so I thought this would be a perfect video to make. So before I jump into my tips on like how I succeeded in school or whatever, I wanted to talk about my credibility, right? Because, okay, before and before that, I feel like there's a lot of myths about ADHD, like we're dumb, we're lazy, and we can't succeed in school. And if you have ADHD, like there's no way you can get 4.0 or whatever, which, I'm here to say that's a lie. So if you're wondering, I studied interdisciplinary studies, which is a three in one major. So I studied bio, public health and psychology. And I graduated a little bit early in three and a half years. And I have a 4.0 science GPA and a 3.9 overall GPA. So I just wanted to say that so people don't come at me and they're like, you studied communications. Of course you got a 4.0. No, I said really hard science courses. And my science GPA is still from Hono. It's possible, even with ADHD. I'm gonna give you a little backstory to back this up, but you don't always have to listen to your teachers. You know, obviously be respectful towards them, please, because I used to teach and it's very, very stressful to be a teacher, okay? And they are very underpaid. But let me give an example of one of my old high school teachers who I have nothing against, by the way. She used to push reading the textbook all the time, like every day, like read the textbook. And I almost failed her class. And I remember staying up late nights, junior year of high school and opening this textbook bio <laughs> and like staring at it like this and like reading the same line over and over again for 30 minutes and just not even be able to move to the next paragraph um, because I'm like stuck on it because it's so hard to comprehend for me. So, Honestly, I should have just given up on the textbook part, at least the way I was doing it. But I kept trying because that's what she kept pushing. But keep in mind, a lot of the times, teachers just assume everyone thinks the same, right? And as in someone who's neurodivergent, we don't study um, efficiently the way other people do, you know? Like, we get bored easily. We can't just sit down, read a textbook in the library and call it a day. At least not me. I don't know. I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I am not a big reader. So textbooks, I hated that. And one way that I can get around textbooks is reading the chapter summaries first. So you can do that first. A lot of teachers used to say, read that at the end. I don't really agree. Um, annotating, eh, whatever. But typing notes, yeah, that takes a long time. You know, it a lot of it is trial and error so honestly see what works for you and then apply that you know see what's giving you good better results and don't compare yourself to other people but you can also you can take tips from other people but don't necessarily think that oh because they're doing that and I, I'm trying that out and I'm not doing I'm not getting the same grades as them that means I'm stupid that's not true at all you just have to find what works for you one thing that worked for me, this is my next point, is to make things fun, right? Because a lot of it is hard for me to start because, you know, I think it's so boring and mundane and I'd rather do anything else, right? So one way to make it a little bit more fun is to study with friends. You can do a Kahoot. You can do tic-tac-toe, but with practice test questions and you can quiz each other. That's what I used to do in the library a lot, quiz each other. You can also make puns. That's what I did for chemistry. I used to teach chemistry um, for SI at my university and we talk about incorporating fun puns into everyday conversation and that helped me remember things a lot. And also another thing is find what time of the day you work best. So I'm a night owl, so I'm okay with staying up later. Obviously, you know, you want to get enough sleep and rest before an exam. So when I say stay up late, 
try not to also wake up stay up late wake up early all the time because it really messes with your health and your brain and all of that so yeah another way you can like make it fun is you pretend you're teaching someone honestly you should have no shame if you're in the library or whatever and you're like mouthing to yourself not not like literally talking to yourself but like you're like like just keep doing you keep talking to yourself if you need to and pretend that you are tutoring someone that's a really good way like this is how you do this explain things complex ideas in a way that an elementary skid kid would understand or a middle school kid would understand and write that out on a whiteboard write that out on your notebook whatever i have horrible handwriting so i'm not a very big notebook pencil and paper person but i love whiteboards because you know a lot of colors and it's easy and then i just take a picture of it so i have it in my camera roll so that you know when i erase the whiteboard then on to the next problem or whatever so that's another way and then my last tip is if you can get accommodations universities i'm pretty sure all of them have a student success center of some kind where you can request accommodations like maybe have a student write notes for you or um which sometimes it's like anonymous so they don't know who they're sending notes to it's just on the portal or you can also get extra test time sometimes you know sometimes i'm literally doing my test and i space out for 20 minutes straight neurotypical people don't tend to do that so they don't need that extra time right and i used to get so annoyed because my friend one of my close friends would say you're so lucky you get extra time like it's just something that i'm born with and i do space out and i have like a lot of test issues or whatever and i get extra time because i need it not because i'm you know and like the queen or whatever like i don't know they just their tone was kind of like that oh she's special that's why she gets extra time or whatever and like in front of everyone and that was really embarrassing i was like oh my god like that was really embarrassing but anyways if you see people like that you know just ignore them i really hated telling people that i had extra test time because they only one person like that description that i just said said that kind of stuff most people are like okay whatever but I just don't like to explain myself because like I shouldn't have to. People shouldn't be so judgmental. Like, oh, you get extra test time. You're, ugh, you're so lucky, you know? Just ignore those people. Like you don't owe them anything. You don't have to tell them. But sometimes I kind of have to because like we were coordinating things. So that was it for my video. If you have any other questions or comments or suggestions on what videos I should post, please comment that down below and also questions because then other people might have things they want to add and share about their experiences and i wish you the best of luck thank you so much for watching please like comment subscribe all of that and i will be uploading more soon bye